body and hovered above me. I saw no shadow. I looked around, searched every building and home that I found. I saw no shadow, but felt the glow. The warmth inside me kept me afloat. Felt like heaven and found my bones. It gave me comfort when I feel alone. Now you're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's time to get better. Best friend, the 23. She left her body and hovered above me. <laughs> Best friend, the 23. I heard the heavens crying above me. They gained an angel. I lost a friend. I felt like dying again and again. I went through hell instead of death. But I keep fighting with each living breath. I saw no way out from where I stood. Felt like a fire above me. For now you're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's Turns you get better through the pain. I will go alone if I fall. your self-righteous symphony I would rather let this go than to bring it up again but 
What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Burley Fishing Podcast. We are live. I'm so glad we're doing this weekly again. Oh, my gosh. But today, we have a very special guest in the Senior Marketing Specialist from Akuma. we got Dave Brown. Dave, how we doing? Good. How you guys all doing? Thanks for having me. Doing great. Dave's been showing us up, talking about his mountain views behind him, that it's, the sun is still out because he's in sunny California. It's a great time. He has all the fish species that have ever existed. It's all super great and fun. We're going to talk about that a lot today. <laughs> but uh, it's actually great because that gives you guys a pretty great like product research area, I would imagine. You get to go test all the things on all the species. Uh, we get a ton of questions for Dave today. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're happy you guys are here with us. We love doing these live episodes. And just so you know, if you like the podcast, if you like the episodes that you've seen so far, if this is your first one, consider subscribing. Come back next week. We do this every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can also hang out and watch some burly fishing videos. I don't know. We drop a lot of those too. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on TikTok. And you can also follow Akuma. Dave, what's the Akuma handle if people are looking for you? Akuma Fishing USA. And that's pretty much on all of the channels or all the platforms at least. Awesome. I, I hear that you said USA and not Canada. And I do, Paul and I were talking about this a second ago. We want to make it super clear to everybody, although I said it incorrectly in a video, considering Dave, that you sent me a rod and reel combo. And I was like, I don't know where these guys are from. I apologize for that. They're not from Canada. It's California, Ontario, California. And I, you know, I just want to point it out, Paul and I are in Michigan. So Canada is just like, obviously the first thing I think of, I've never even been to California, to be honest. Like I've never been that far out West in this country. So for me to even think about California is essentially another planet. So I immediately just went to, in my brain, oh yeah, Canada. Got it. Cool. 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 <laughs> it's almost the same. It's, you know, it's, you know, one's really sunny and also has amazing, you know, mountains and ocean views and everything you could possibly think of in any scenery, scenery, like pictures you've ever seen. And the other one is really cold most of the time. That's true. But it's just also for reference, possible. we are in Ontario, California. We're just east of Los Angeles. Uh, I actually live down in Orange County, so I'm pretty close to the uh, ocean. We've got some really cool fisheries around here, but that's where Ontario's headquarters for the U.S. is uh, right in Ontario, California. Duly noted people duly noted so again we're gonna have a ton of fun today talking to dave we've got all sorts of questions you guys are gonna want to hear it i know you guys like gear i know you like tackle just like me because you watch my channel so i think you're gonna want to stay tuned for this one it's gonna be a lot of fun this episode also of course we got to call out the 25 dollars giveaway the way that works is we're going to give away a 25 dollars e-gift card to monsterbass.com this podcast is sponsored by monster bass thank you monster bass for that sponsorship uh and just so you know they offer a monthly fishing tackle subscription bag so if you guys want to hook it up and check one out you can use the code save 15 s-a-v-e-1-5 save 15 bucks off of your first bag go check it out and the way the giveaway works at the end of the show we're going to rapid fire some questions at dave we're going to just machine gun kelly him and just be like hey man what's your favorite color purple or green and the answer is both of those but we're gonna ask him a whole bunch of questions and as we're asking him those questions if you guys saw the Debo's episode you know what's up uh then you know as he's answering those we're gonna let you guys chat and then we're gonna pick a random chatter to win 25 dollars gift card so it's easy you just talk and you hang out with us and there you go you're basically entered and then we announce that winner and then you win a gift card i'll send you that later uh quick update from last week's show we did end up getting a response from Monster Bass, they are donating $300 from our stream. Like we raised $300 to the American Cancer Society. Proud of you guys. That was, I'm clapping. That was so I'm trying awesome. not to ruin anyone's ears, but I am applauding. Just like right that was mic. awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. So I want to ca call that out. Thank you to all of you who participated uh, last week. You guys are fantastic. I'm so happy that our show was able to do something like that. So thank you so much. Um, I did announce the jig giveaway winners as well. So congrats go to Tyler and Haley, who both won a box of jigs that I was cleaning out from all my fishing tackle. So you guys, I hope you catch some tanks with that. I also sent them a burly fishing hat. So, uh, and Haley was in Canada. Not where Akuma is from, so just heads up. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for updates. We, I, I built a thing with Paul, and by I, I mean Paul built it, and I watched. I was the chief beer officer. That's what we decided, and also I made that thing was holding a bunch of uh, Akuma rods that are not stocked up yet, but we'll get to that part of the show later. Updates out. Paul, carry on. 
Yeah, uh, that was a ton of updates. That's about 12 times as much as I normal. did it. I did it pretty fast, I would say. And we haven't gotten to hear like a single word from Dave yet. So I'm going to. He said hi. We are now. Okay, we got one. So we're going to we're going to extend you past one word. So I like to do a nice little icebreaker, an easy question. We call it the Q of the D question of the day. So this one's easy. There's no wrong answers unless it's a horrible answer. So <laughs> riddle me this sparkles or no sparkles on the bass boat what's your opinion on that so being from california there's a lot of bedazzled jeans walking around and all that kind of fun stuff so i've actually got no problem with the uh, glitter boats okay. we actually got a lot of guys taking the glitter boats out and actually catching tuna around here if you get on a flat Ooh. day you can run 40 miles offshore which is absolutely nuts but uh wow. no problem with the glitter it actually attracts in the fish so I was gonna say, are you gonna then, are you gonna then like go full like uh, ranger boat, like glitter bomb on your like offshore vessel, or are we sticking with the traditional white? We're going to traditional white. So actually, it's kind of funny about the whole color thing. So California traditional white. You get out to the east coast, you get that Florida, you start getting all those different uh, tints of the green and the teals and all that kind of fun stuff. Traditional white out here. Actually, the Okuma boat's white, but it's got a wrap, so I guess that kind of counts. All right. So you're gonna be like neat, but not that neat. Totally. <laughs> I like it. Jeff, what's Sorry, your uh, life. Jeff, what's your thought on the uh, on the bedazzle? On the bedazzle. See, uh my Hobie Pro Angler has no bedazzling, so it does have a nice Snorlax sticker on it, which I'm very proud of. Oh. Uh <laughs> what? <laughs> what what color is your boat? Green. Bright. Uh, Chartreuse. There it is. This color. <laughs> It matches. <laughs> I got it to match my Yeti, or did I get the Yeti to match that? I don't know. I have a lot of chartreuse. If you look at like my new computer setup that uh, Chaz helped me build and order for me and do everything for me because I know nothing about technology, uh, all of the RGB lighting is chartreuse. Because if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Oddly enough, the fishing industry and then that fishing as a sport is one of the only people that ever know how to spell the word chartreuse. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> like every vowel. In the right industry. It's also freaking our logo, dude. Exactly. <laughs> you, gotta, you, you gotta rep that color. <laughs> All right. Carry on, Paul. Where are we at? Sure. No one cares what I think, but uh, no, I nobody am... does care. Do you like <laughs> Paul? Do you like part sparkles? Sparkles. You know what? I gotta be honest. I, it's not that I would tell anyone not to get sparkles, but were I to get like a super fancy bass boat, I would probably have like the most muted, invisible bass boat that you could possibly have. Like it would be matte no gloss like it would just be maybe i like the camo i was very upset when the the new hobie pro angular didn't come i mean it's camo but it's like blue, it's like a bright blue i wanted like the 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 camo tan that they had on the other one they're they're the 180 and i was upset so yeah that's what i would get um so i guess uh dave the first real question for you is like what does it mean to be a marketing specialist for a company like Okuma, like what, what does that even, what does that job entail for you? Actually, it tells a lot. I'll kind of give you my background with Okuma. I've actually been there for 14 years, if you can believe that. I started as a, one of the regional sales managers for Okuma. I used to work for Hilton Hotels. I was a director of purchasing for Hilton Hotels. Slid over to fishing. I used to be on their pro staff. I used to do a lot of uh, tournaments. Came over as a tournament angler. Uh, I knew the whole team here in Southern California. Uh, there was a sales position opened up. I was lucky enough to uh, fit what they were looking for, having that buyer background, which was kind of cool. I did that for about the first six years. Then after that, we started getting just more and more into events, uh, just stuff all around the country. And nobody likes traveling. Everybody had little kids at the time. So I was like, heck, man, let's do it. So uh, we slid over to that side. We created a position called events uh, promotion and events manager. So I took that over. Traveled the country extensively. Uh, actually, I've been all 50 states for Okuma at this point. Um, slid over, started doing all the events. Uh, over the last, I'd say, four years or so, uh, we had a new marketing manager that came over, and we combined everything under one roof. But uh, as a senior marketing specialist, my job, my daily job, uh, other than fishing, is uh, I do all the social media for the company. So for Okuma, Soft Steel, and Fish Lab, I do all the social media on all the platforms. Uh, I do a lot of the, the video production. If you go onto the YouTube page for any one of those brands, you'll see a lot of the how-to videos or our tune-up Tuesday or some of the other stuff that we do. Um, I'll do some of the live stuff that we do via Instagram. You'll see my face on that all the time, unfortunately. Uh, and then, of course, I do all the uh, like the pay-per-click advertising. Uh, the digital advertising for magazines is Jonathan in our office, but I'll do the digital side on all the, all the pay-per-click stuff. 
Uh, there's a lot to it. You know, there's a, there's like I mentioned fishing in joking, but you know, there's, if you go to any one of my social outlets, it's all fishing photos. Everybody thinks we're out having a great time all the time, but there's a lot of work to it too. It turns we, into a job every once in a while. We oh, love, man. yeah, we love to see the gripping <laughs> grins. We like that one. That's the deal. But I, so you talked about soft steel and fish lab. What is that? Cause I think a lot of people are probably like, just go, they just like glossed over that and it like never happened. But what is that for? What is that for Akuma? And what does that mean for your job? So Okuma, Okuma Fishing Tackle is the parent brand. So we're the parent brand of these three companies. Uh, two years ago now, we took on a company called Fish Lab Tackle. If you go to fishlabtackle.com, that's all of our baits. You're talking about glide baits. You got soft baits. You got uh, some really cool stuff for bass, musky, walleye, perch. We've got uh, some really cool stuff. And uh, saltwater baits in there as well. And then Soft Steel is our other brand. It's called uh, Soft Steel USA and that's uh, that's all of our lines. So you got braided lines, you got uh, fluorocarbon, you got monofilament. This last year we introduced something called stretch floral, which is actually a stretchable fluorocarbon. Really cool stuff. But anyway, Okuma is the parent brand, and then those are our, our children brand underneath there as well. And they all kind of fall under one roof. See, in addition to not knowing you weren't in Canada, I also didn't know that either. So when you first contacted me and you were like, oh, we got baits and line and stuff too, I was like, what? No, because I like Paul's had you had an Akuma rod and reel right yep. for mm -hmm. for a while and like that was the only one we had seen and then like you know we had our our bit our normal Abus and like Shimano's and that stuff and I just didn't know like what the Akuma stuff was like so I mean that's when like you first reached out to me I was like bro I haven't used it at all I don't want to like say you know uh, that I know anything about that or that I should be rocking this gear and then you sent me the Serrano and I was like. <laughs> that was a whole different ballgame. I had no idea what was coming, by the way. Because I remember opening that and going like, this is the bluest thing I've ever... There's the most absurd blue, like fluorescent blue. And people call it out in like every video I have because now it's on the wall. And they're like, dude, that blue rod, like what is that? <laughs> it's nuts. You guys went for a crazy color there. But I, I did want to call back like to your point of running so many social media channels. I've run... First of all, we run hours is enough and i help monster bass with their youtube and like the two of those i'm like cool this is a full-time job so you're running how many channels in total like how many times do you flip through you're like i need this app and then i gotta go to this app and then i gotta do this <laughs> editing i probably got the strongest thumbs in uh, southern california <laughs> from all the scrolling uh so you know three brands versus you know you got yeah. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We play a little bit on TikTok, but not too much. But, you know, any kind of question that comes through on any of the social platforms, that all comes through me. Mm -hmm. um, if you catch me after I had coffee in the morning, I'm usually pretty nice to you in those responses. Uh, if not, it might be a one word <laughs> response. But uh, I try to get back to everybody on those platforms as much as I can. I mean, you only have so many words to go around, so it's understandable if some people get one word and some people get to catch you early to get like that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, dude. And by the way, I just want to be clear. Strongest thumbs in California. That's a bold statement. We got a lot of gamers in California. You're that's talking about you're, you're going to be like dueling up against some callous thumbs uh, little <laughs> kids for sure. Tell you what, when uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know if you can see behind me that that's the uh, Call of Duty station right behind me there. Oh, so. oh, <laughs> I think the gauntlet's been thrown. I think we need to get like a 16 year old kid in here who's like professional job is playing Fortnite, and we need to like, we need to see like like text per minute. I have a text question though. Per minute. How many times? <laughs> how many times do you like? Do you even sweat like a typo anymore? Like when you throw up a post and you see like you, you know you like T E H instead of T H E, you know, are you even like? Do you does that even a thing that affects you or is it just gone? Like you're like 600 posts a day, I don't even care. It's, uh, you know, a lot of times that'll go right by. Uh, if they get pointed out to me, I'll go back in and edit them. Usually if you're typing the word doc and it gets misspelled, you know what I'm going <laughs> yeah. at there? Yeah. You know, that kind you of stuff. I'll, go in, uh, I'll, I'll change that stuff around. Yeah, <laughs> vowels are hard sometimes. So I don't know if it's the shape of my thumb, but like S being right next to A and I'm typing fishing, I type in F-I-A-H so like probably 15 times a day, especially doing the hashtags. And I honest to God, I just like, why can't autocorrect fix that? But it'll, it'll, it'll make, it'll make ducking into the wrong word. Totally. It's like, how are we, how, it's 2021. Can we fix this? I get it. I'd say about 80% of my uh, posts come out with the word H-T-E instead of the. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, it is what it is. Help me. Yeah. Um, Dude, so I, I did one the other day on Instagram. I don't know if you caught that, Paul. Like somebody caught it early. 
Def- definitely had a, a swear word slip up where I was like totally casual word. I can't even remember what it was. It was probably like ass or something. Like you're supposed to say something else. <laughs> Ended up saying ass. And a lot of people were just like, what the heck does that mean? I was like, yo, my bad. Just deliriously typing Instagram posts. Well, and, <laughs> now, and now you know why uh, Twitter has an, needs an edit button. Um, so what are some of the, you talked about like some of the traveling and all that sort of thing. And I want to, I want to give people kind of a flair for like Okuma, because I think a lot of some brands get pigeonholed. Like when I think of St. Croix or something like that, like I always think of like the same exact thing. And I think Okuma has this like huge breadth, like like, the, the, the breadth of the offering, especially if you go check out the website is kind of ridiculous. Talk to me about some of those trips that you guys are going on. And and especially when you're trying to showcase some of the product. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're, uh, we're not as big of a company as a lot of people think we are, but we are, you know, internally, we have to be something to everybody. You know, our largest market for Okuma is the Pacific Northwest, three states, you know, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. We sell the most product up there, and that's the salmon, steelhead, and trout rods, the SST. Um, My yeah. mind just melted. I'm sorry. I have to stop you. My mind is, like, totally it's dripping out of my ears. You can't tell because of the headphones, but... Seriously, the salmon steelhead, which we know, I mean, that's massive business. Like, let's not get it yeah. twisted. Like, that's a massive business, but that was, I'm honestly stunned. Yeah, exactly. I saw someone was asking what's the best seller. So, like, that SST is, you know, that's some of the top stuff, that Pacific Northwest market. And then other than that, you know, the next step from there is going to be the line counter business for us. Your Magdas, your Convectors, your cold waters. that whole Midwest trolling market is just gigantic. And, you know, we own that, we own that market in a lot of those areas, you know, the, you know, the biggest thing you're going to go up against like the Dakota reel, but, you know, we're talking all graphite reels versus some aluminum reels and some other stuff that's out there. But if you're looking at just pure volume between Midwest and that line counter market, even the Pacific Northwest for the salmon trolling guys, that line counter market's gigantic. And of course, we've got a huge focus down in Florida this year. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, but you're still talking salmon, right? Because a lot of those guys in the, they're either, it's either walleye or salmon. Walleye or salmon. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Exactly. And then, you know, around the country, our, our bass market is getting large. We had four new series of bass rods last year. I think I see three or four of them on his wall right there. You know, <laughs> reels were expanding. We got some really cool bass reels coming out next year. Jeff got a sneak peek at that. There's some awesome new stuff. But, you know, California, if you go down here, you go to any one of the big sport boats, uh, you know, the head boats, they call them on the East Coast. But out here are big sport fishing boats. You're going to see yeah. our Makaira line counters on all these boats now. It's it's crazy. You go to the Pacific, you go up to the Northeast. It's all of our surf fishing gear. So, you know, you mm-hmm. have to be a little bit of everything to everybody, which is, uh, you know, so like if you look at our catalog, it's 230. Look how thick that thing is. It's like 230 or 240 pages. It's it's pretty ridiculous. So I thought I knew Okuma, right? And then, you know, Jeff and I were talking about when things are kind of ramping up and I, you know, I went to check out the offering and I was like, there are fly reels on there. There are fly rods on there. There's travel reels on there. You got like what the psycho stick, which is like, yeah. I didn't even know existed. Existed. <laughs> and I'm looking at some of these, like the, the, the custom stuff that's coming out like the limited edition stuff that and we're going to talk about this, but I just remember being like, what, 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 what? And I, my, I'm literally, mine was blown. Dude, it's, I, it's pretty fun. If you know, we get, we got to do, we did get pigeonholed as well as everything's, you know, yeah. Originally, it was like a lot of just the Walmart level stuff or kids gear, stuff like that. But the products changed over the last 15 years a lot. And, uh, you know, we're, we'll go head to head with anybody. Oh. Yeah, I, I will say, like, when I did the Serrano unboxing, there was a few people that I know didn't even watch the video. And they're like, Akuma, that's trash. That's like what you get at Walmart. And I was like, I'm holding the Serrano like. <laughs> no <laughs> I was like what but yeah like to to Paul's point too uh Dave when you sent over the like hey get your gear form I was like Dave can you just tell me what to get because like I don't yeah, there's exactly. so many so many no I did that to him Paul <laughs> Legitimately, oh, I, I was like I need these seven setups <laughs> you know it's kind of funny so we were talking about the Pacific Northwest and how popular like that SST series of rods I want to say there's 78 individual skews within that family of rods so like you're crazy. talking serrano i think there's 11 right so you're talking ssc there's 72 individual skews dude even your fish lab stuff like when i looked at fish lab i was like oh my gosh and like swim baits ranging up to like what's your heaviest swim bait you got like eights tens there's some yeah there's some big saltwater baits that are yeah big. Yeah. I was like, dude, where do we go with this? <laughs> we can go anywhere. Uh, the answer is everywhere. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure on your fish lab one, I was like, I want to try, yep, all of these, yeah, except for the exactly. saltwater ones. <laughs> and some of the stuff we have on the way is going to be even more mind blowing. Yeah. And there's some really cool stuff. So yeah. let's let's skip ahead though. So we're already talking about that. I, I'll be honest. I really want to get my hands on some of the travel stuff. I my, I I've used two piece rods for a long time for like backpacking trips and jamming into the bottom of a kayak and like I do a decent amount of fly fishing and so. I have a lot of like multi-piece routes, right? And they all work really well. But like whenever, I don't know why, but like when my brain thinks bass fishing, like I'm thinking one piece rod, period. Like there is no, like a two piece rod, like every time I see one, I'm always like instantly, like it like falls into a subcategory. But I went to the site and I'm like looking at some of these travel, like breakdown two, three, four piece rods. I legit like really want to cast a couple of them and I want to hook a giant and feel it because they look, they're the exact same model as what you guys are making, which is not what most manufacturers do. Most manufacturers are making a different rod. And this is like literally the exact same rod in like two or three pieces. That travel business has been absolutely crazy. I mean, we've got the, you know, speaking of the bass side, so we've got like the Citrix, those are going to be our bass rods. So those are all your seven foot one, I think it is, four piece rods. Uh, all of our travel rods feature a European spigot ferrule. So if you, if you look at it, there's a really long ferrule piece that goes into the rod, and it, it looks long and it looks odd, but uh, it, that's what gives it that full one-piece feel. A lot of two-piece rods, it's maybe like a tip-over butt where it just goes over just a little bit, and it just doesn't feel stout. Like in our Nomad series of travel rods, it's got that long European spigot ferrule, but you can you can have somebody grab that other end and just rear back on that thing, and it you know, they're just not going to break. They're just awesome rods. <laughs> That, that was there's, one the, so there's the Nomad, there's the SSTs, there's the Citrix, there's the Voyager. I mean, we got a huge breadth of travel rods. Oh, so many. That that was one that uh, I think I, I got a my first like feral experience was with a casking rod that I still had. It's like the Perigee 2. And when I put it together, not going to lie, I was like, this doesn't work. This is not connecting the way it's supposed <laughs> to connect. Because you, I was thinking like it was supposed to go all the way together and not have like that ferrule exposed. I was like, what the heck is going on? And I was legitimately mad for a little while until I looked it up and learned things. So, <laughs> so the only issues we ever have with our travel rods is that people see that little space, and mm -hmm. we used to put a little spacer on the rod so that it would actually touch and it visually Look, yeah. it looks better. But people will grab those things and they'll bang the butt down on the ground trying to jam them in, and then yep. it's. Then it's a one piece rod because you're never getting that thing out. <laughs> That's that is legitimately what I did for a little while until my wife was like, "You're gonna break it," and I was like, "Yeah, you're probably right." And then I looked it up. I was like, well, "Oh, it's supposed to be this way." <laughs> but it's also one of those things too. Like if you don't have experience with it, like you like unless you're legit reading the instructions, like it's just not it, it is not intuitive, even though it's the right way to do it. So you're a fisherman, though, who reads instructions? Come on. <laughs> I literally every time Jeff gets a thing, I'm like, <laughs> stop. Whatever you're doing, I know you're doing it wrong. Stop. <laughs> like... I have never read instructions in my life. I was big into Legos, so think about it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, uh, like, I, I kind of want to get into, I, I do want to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I had a, I had a different plan, but we're going to mix it up. So kind of walk me through, uh, just walk me, we, like, most of the folks who are listening are, like, really going to be focused on bass, and I, I mm -hmm. want to kind of, I want to live there a little bit. So walk me through what the bass lineup looks like for, for from Okuma. So from a rods perspective and then from like a reel perspective, if, if you would. Yeah, certainly. So right now we've got, uh, if you want to go just high end rods, we kind of work our way down a little bit. The high end rod that just came out and they're actually just hitting the shores over the next couple of weeks are the psycho stick rods. These rods, if you haven't seen the video, I know Jeff put a cool video out. There's some, they're just, super unique rods the actual wrap on these that the carbon fiber wrap on them each one of these rods is completely unique they're what i want to say they're what 46 ton graphite very sensitive but also very strong rods so you don't you're not just going to nick it and snap these things like a lot of high uh, graphite content rods do uh, but they're phenomenal rods yeah exactly Incredible i just destroyed one last season i'm sorry to interrupt you <laughs> i I, it looked the bad. one you hooked. Yes, it looked yes. bad, but I'm telling you, I did not do anything that bad to it, and it imploded. Sorry, go ahead. It is pretty incredible when you hear that shotgun blast, though, and then you're holding oh, about yeah. uh, 18 inches of rod in your hand. Yep, yep. 
Dude, it was nuts. I, I remember re-watching the GoPro because he had his GoPro mounted to the, the bow of the boat of his kayak pointing up and his rod was laying just over so you could see exactly the, the tip of the rod. And he goes to like low cast a crankbait and just smokes the tip and it, sure. it exploded. It was nuts. It was crazy. And that was the start of a really bad day for us, but that's a story for now. We digress. <laughs> the psycho stick. And every, I, I sent it in chat. I said, everyone go Google it like immediately. Oh yeah, because it's nuts. Until you see it, there's not the level of appreciation mm -hmm. for the, the level of craftsmanship. Like I remember hearing about it, like, that's neat. It's probably neon orange. Moving on. And that's then I saw neat. it and I was like, Holy smokes. So, anyways, I apologize for interrupting. You thought it yeah, was me. Especially or... the light. You just turn that blank a little bit. There, yeah, the yeah. Cool. It's silly. Oh, yeah. So I love it. Why do you think it was neon orange? Dude, it's just like your in my word brain, association I heard, like, with Psycho. Yeah, I heard Psycho Stick. I'm like, this is for sure going to be like burnt. Like, this is going to just be like neon something. I'm oh, moving on. But no, it is, it is sweet. It's so cool. Oh, hey, yeah. yeah, you guys in chat, if you got questions, make sure you call them out a whole bunch. Charles will catch them if we miss them. But if you got questions for Dave about Akuma, about social media, about fishing all the species that ever existed, about upcoming <laughs> products and sneak peeks and things that he's not supposed to talk about, like hit us up or throw us a super chat. <laughs> we'll talk to you. Yeah, definitely. Right. I did see a, I did see a chat come through. They were asking about a seven foot 11, like flipping stick and swim bait rod. You know, we do have a dedicated series to swim bait. We have two actual dedicated series. We have the guide select swim bait rods. They're all seven foot eleven. Mm -hmm. right I got wall. one. Wherever, wherever I'm on your screen, they're on Jeff's wallet. <laughs> and then you guys uh, know the, where other they ones, are. the other one's the SBX swim bait rods. Both mm -hmm. also seven foot eleven. All they come in a heavy, extra heavy, and a double extra heavy. But those are designed specifically for throwing big baits, which is what we do out here in Southern California. Yeah. And they're perfect for flipping as well. Of course, the uh, tournament concept series rods, the TCS rods. Those actually have a couple of flipping rods within that family of rods as well. But getting back to those bass, so you got Psycho Stick. Right mm -hmm. below that, you got the Helios SX rods. Those are all 40-ton mm -hmm. graphite. I want to say there's maybe 13 in that series. High-end components, they're all about four ounces. Those rods are super light, super nice. Below that are those TCS rods I was talking about, Tournament Concept Series. We used to have a partnership with uh, Scott Martin over many, many years. He was uh, one of our anglers out there, and he designed those rods for us. We parted ways, but we changed up the rods, put some higher-end components on it, and re-released them. Uh, then below TCS, you have two other series. You have the Serrano, which is the bright blue one up on the wall there. And then uh, you have the Saros. Now, you were talking about whipping that rod and snapping that tip. So those two series, they both feature something called the UFR, which is our unidirectional fiber reinforcement or flex reinforcement, depending on the, where you're looking. So what that is, is the top one third, and Jeff might even know this, but the top one third of the rod actually has fibers that go longitudinally. So rather oh, wow. than just being wrapped like a regular blank, they actually go straight up and down. So what that does is that allows 300 times more lifting power in that rod. So we designed those for a lot of our Louisiana market where guys are trying to, yeah. you're trying to bounce a big redfish or, you know, the way people do, right? You grab... A third, a third of the way down, and you're trying to lift and horse these fish up, which is going to snap. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to snap every rod. It doesn't matter what manufacturer. Right. So this helps a lot. You probably see some videos where you see me grabbing the rod. I'm actually doing this full flex deal, and that's a, that's what those rods have, though. So that and those rods are in that 89 to say 100 dollar type of range, and it covers a lot of that. They're pretty awesome. Still so super sensitive too. So that's what I need. So yes. I don't break. Hundred percent what Paul needs. <laughs> exactly. But you, you said the Serrano wasn't on that too. So Serrano's got that. Yep. Okay. So if if you guys saw the square bill video I just did on the Monster Bass channel, if you didn't go check it out. But on the Monster Bass YouTube channel, I did one and I pulled the tip down like that. And what I did was before that I had a Ducket Silverado. So I pulled the Ducket Silverado and to me and Paul, like that was the whippiest rod we had uh, in a medium heavy for a while. And then I pulled out the Serrano and I was just kind of comparing the two and I bent that tip down and I was like, I, I, at first I was like, what is happening? Did I just mess this up? Like, this is weird. <laughs> and on the video I go like, wow, that's actually way better. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what I was like, why it was so different, but yeah, I definitely noticed huge difference hyper flexible i see a wisconsin wild man he must be filling out his order but he uh, he's asking about some uh, moderate fast action rods or fast action rods that whole uh that whole serrano series are actually an extra fast taper 
So they're, uh, you know, it's got full backbone, and then you get more of that tip section. Yeah. That tournament concept series is going to be more of your moderate, moderate, fast rods. Just to answer his question. Love it. Uh, Brandon, just send Dave a big old list of, I need it to do this, 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 and this. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> when I did Dave, like, I was no, like, don't do that, please. I was Thanks. like, big baits, little baits, frog baits, <laughs> cover me. <laughs> Well, I'm actually really pumped to use the line. So we, you know, when I saw the list of line that was coming, I was like, dude, I, uh, so I have a problem with line. Like I've, I've tested a ton of them and I, I'm, st I'm like constantly when I go looking for a line, I'm like trying different things. I mean, like, I know like half the world runs on power pro and that's like, you know, you kind of end up there a lot of times just because of like what's available uh, specifically here. But like, I'm actually really, really pumped to try some of that fluoro uh, to mess around with some of the mono for some top water. Um, and then obviously the braid, because like I bring all my rods like indoors, like six months out of the year specifically yeah. because like, I don't want to waste $300 in braid, like it, in, in braid money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sensitive to the fact that like that braid degrades like in the winter and all that sort of thing. So like, you know, I'm always watching it. I'm really pumped to use some of that braid. Like I'm, I'm pumped to give it a shot. It's exciting. Yeah, that eminent braid. It's a it's a really cool eight carrier braid. It's it's awesome. The, the ice fishermen have been digging it. I think it starts Ooh. at eight pound, and mm -hmm. goes up to one hundred and twenty. I think or hundred and hundred and twenty. Which like, the, might nice. might be enough to throw the dumbbells that you guys are putting hooks on these days. Totally. So, <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I was just going to say cheers to two super chats real quick before we continue that thought. Uh, so thank you to Angus Patterson, ninety nine cents from canada not where akuma is from and also chris shu our boy who has by the way you guys a video dropping tomorrow on our channel that i made with chris shu's baits he sent me some baits so there's your preview tomorrow is an unboxing from tackle warehouse from our boy chris shu uh they each had a question but i'm gonna let you finish your thought there dave i just wanted to call them out and then we're gonna jump back to their questions no Sorry. worries as i say on that line side the one real cool one and a lot of bass fishermen don't necessarily think about is that stretchable fluorocarbon you know fluorocarbon we introduced that a couple years ago and you know mainly on the saltwater side but it's really something that bass people should think about but everybody fishes fluorocarbon everybody loves mm -hmm. it they do a full spool of it which is awesome but this stretchable stuff is so unique. There was one other company that was doing it a few years back. They actually not around anymore. But what's unique about the stretchable fluorocarbon is just the, the stretch, exactly. You still have, it's 100% fluorocarbon. It's completely abrasion resistant. But that stretch, what that does is that really lets you cinch down your knots. That's going to be your big weak point on any kind of fluorocarbon. Because it, there's no stretch to it, you still have a, mm -hmm. a you know, it, it actually increases the breaking strength by about 30% on those knots, wow. which is which is really cool. And then if you happen to be a guy that's flipping, you're flipping braid, and you got a little short, say, two feet, three feet of fluorocarbon braid. If you're fishing in big weeds, when you go for that giant hook set, that little bit of stretch, you're not always ripping that lip out of that bass either. You get a little bit more hookups, that better knot strength. It's it's actually a pretty cool feature. That's Jeff, I, I can smell a video. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Because uh, we ordered about three billion yards of line from you, Dave. So. And one day you may get it, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be nuts? I'm just going to spool up 10,000 reels. It's going to be great. All right. So no, but I'm, I'm, I'm smelling the video. I want to do some I want to do some some Michigan frogging. And, uh, oh, yeah. and yeah, we'll put it to the test. I like that. So all we need is that line by July. It Doable? should be. It's funny. Doable? So just, I, I'm joking about this stuff not showing up, but just for the viewers out there that have maybe made some orders or they're going to their local stores, it's hard to find anything right now as far as mm -hmm. fishing. Uh, even yep. if you go to like Amazon, I mean, it's it's hard to get anything. I was telling these guys earlier that we're actually running about 25% to 30% inventory in our warehouse right now. I've been there for 14 years, and it's the first time I've been able to stand against one wall and see all the way to the other wall in the warehouse. There's just nothing. This stuff is crazy busy. As soon as a container shows up, it's pre-spoken for and going right out to retailers and distributors. It's nuts right now. Wow. Well, and we've we've talked about this. And sorry to segue, uh, Angus and Chu. We'll get to you in a second. So, <laughs> no, we will. Actually, we'll do that now. The question was. <laughs> Paul's like, sit down. I got. I feel I gotta, rude. So we'll get. We'll, we'll, you are. Rude. Do you want to? I've been trying do... to get to them. <laughs> All right, hit it up. I'm sorry. We'll get them. So, so Angus, hey, Burley and Paul, what are your favorite real brands? Bro, you're going to come at us on our show with Akuma and be like, hey, 
What are your favorite real brands? I appreciate the chutzpah. We're going to say Akuma. <laughs> but also, I do have a few of them. And now that I've gotten my hand on the Komodo SS, like, I can't wait to, to try out the spinning reels. I haven't got any spinning reels yet. But the Komodo SS, and I was really impressed by the Serrano. Like, I've done a ton of videos of that, you guys. Comparing it to the Shimano SLX, and I got beat up. Beat up in the comments. They're like, oh, how are you going to say Shimano SLX? Well, Not and better. What, and I was so, like, it's well, a value. The, it was so a value that, equation. It was $10 way, difference. Yes. But yeah, go ahead. We, the, way video, a bunch the, too. the way that video, so I fished it too. And that was actually the yeah. first time that I got to, well, fish it. So we went into like a big open space and we sat the around and we had like three stations. We had, we had three stations set up and we actually, we probably cast it for what, three hours? Yeah. I mean, we legit just cast it for like three hours. We had a lot of like your kind of like traditional value reels. We had some high-end reels and then we had sort of like a bunch in between. And like most, like you're going up against that SLX, like that's a high value reel. It's it's not, it's on question. I mean, it's like a high value reel. Mm -hmm. um, and even casting with my opposite hand, because I'm also a left-hand retrieve dude and we had a right-hand retrieve uh, reel from Akuma, I mean, instantaneously i could just i was like this is like in the same class right like it was in the same class and that's not what you often end up with and so yeah like the the difference is a lot of times you're you end up splitting hairs with reels that are that close and if there's a ten dollar difference in price there's a ten dollar yeah. difference in price if you don't have to pay the ten bucks don't pay the ten bucks like get the reel that makes sense for you to get like it's kind of a no-brainer and i think again yeah. It's like a lot of people just kind of put that SLS on a pedestal because they see it all the time. And we all do the same thing. I do the same thing with mm -hmm. the Black Max. Like, it's hard to get a better reel for, like, $39.99 when it's on sale. I mean, it's just yeah. when you're first starting out, it's hard to beat that. And so we put those up on a pedestal. But when you're sitting – I mean, Jeff, how many – like, three hours of legitimately casting 10 I was sweating. reels. I was sweating. And we, we flipped – we pitched and we and we yeah. we threw some zingers for like three hours and that's what it came out to. So that's how that video went down. Just for those folks who watched that video, for anyone who made that comment, we legitimately casted every single one of those reels for at least 20, 30 minutes. I mean, that's just I, what we did. I came in with the SLX on a pedestal. I was like, this should win. Yeah. And and to me and you, it it was not unanimous. <laughs> it did not. No, it was. So, I mean, it's, it's close and it's hard to argue, but yeah, there yeah, it is. I so mean, I mean, it it yeah. So it. It left a real positive mark on me for Akuma. And then obviously I talked with you a lot more after that, Dave. And then, you know, we, we are where we are. But I still want to try, obviously, the rest of the reels. So to give you guys like a full honest review, we'll be testing them out. I do have them. They're right there. They're going to go on a rod <laughs> until I get the rest of my Akuma rods. And we're going to make this thing happen. All right. Um, but yes. Yeah, so, all right. So we got that. We got uh, Chris Shu short on money due to the tackle warehouse MB orders. Thank you, because you sent one of those to me. <laughs> but he just says, uh, oh, gosh, we've been talking for a while. LOL, Dave, uh, what length and action would you prefer for cranking monster bass cranks? A third of an ounce? Saying like a third ounce, so lighter crankbaits. What would you say as far as like length and action on a cranking rod? Was that actually for me or for you that guys? That was for you. He said Dave. He, he said LOL, Dave. That's a good I question. I don't know what that's, he was laughing about, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's a, actually that's a really good question. I actually probably just defer that to you guys. I mean, that crankbait, that's your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I so, don't do a lot of small crankbaits out here. Everything I throw is going to be big. <laughs> yeah, 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 big yeah. and salty. Big yep. and salty. Yeah. So uh, length and action. So I like longer. So the one I got from Akuma that I'm excited to try because it's longer than the normal ones I have is a 7.5. I think it's a guide select cranking series and uh, it's a moderate action. Um, so it's a little different. So Dave was talking about the extra fast action tip on the Serrano where like it's, you know, the backbone, it has a backbone, but it's bending more, flexing more at the end of the rod. So you go to like slower actions or moderate slower actions, it's moving that all the way down. So like a moderate, it's gonna fold more in the middle better. So with crankbaits especially, it's like if you want to work the fish, if you want to let the rod do its job and not lose as many fish, it's, it seems to be if you go to like the moderate or slower actions, depending on what size crankbait you're using, that works better. Like if you wanna get that fish back to the boat. So uh, that one's moderate, I'm stoked to use it. Uh, 
it's gonna be a lot of fun and like paul you got your hands on that one actually i think that was the one i showed you all of them including the swim bait rod and that was the one that you were like this is sweet i want this really i bad. gravitated <laughs> to that one like instantaneously and yes. I'll, I'll be honest so the the th i'll tell you the thing that does it for me uh on quality of rods is the way mm -hmm. that the guides are attached to the rod like that's yeah one of the first things i look at it's like like that like i i can are i could tell almost instantaneously in, instantaneously that the way the guides are attached quality versus average versus below average so i was instantly mm -hmm. drawn to that rod um and i will say for me i know a lot of i like a moderate for crankbaiting i know a lot of guys say that's what they like mm -hmm. i actually prefer like right in between a moderate and a fast and the reason i say that is it really depends on how you fish a crankbait i, I fish a crankbait a lot maybe a little bit differently than a lot of people do because mm -hmm. I'm actually taking and I'm looking at one crankbait that's going to do it all. And so while a lot of guys like that, but moderate for like a sweeping hook set, that's not going to rip, you know, the, 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 the trebles right out of the fish's mouth and that whole thing. I actually prefer the sensitivity. So I'm one of those people that goes straight braid to cranks. A lot of times I want to rip through cover and then I just don't go insano on my hook set. So that yeah. I actually prefer like, the the traditional moderate somewhere between that and a little bit faster of an action so because i like to literally i watch the rod tip more than i watch anything else while i'm fishing a crankbait so for me it's somewhere in between the way that you can mitigate some of that is with the length of the rod so jeff was talking about having a little bit more length when the when the rod length like gets a little bit longer i want a little bit more moderate and as the length gets shorter i want it to be a little bit stiffer so that's just how i that's just how i do it and that's how i think mm -hmm. about it um I'll be honest though, you, you really can't go wrong with a kind of either either a medium or a moderate somewhere, you know, a little bit maybe softer than what you would probably normally like than your fast action tip. That's just you're you're not gonna go wrong. Yeah, for sure. And to call out like the MB video did I, I did on Monday, uh or or like some somewhere around that, like a softer rod like that duck at Silverado or the Serrano would be something I would throw a square bill on. Cause I think it's a heck ton of fun. And that flex that that Serrano has is like silly nuts. I'm not going to lose that fish. <laughs> it's so awesome. Those um, guys right. like cranking those real quick. Those guys like cranking makes you were talking about those rods mm -hmm. are, you know, specifically for cranking six foot nine, yeah. all the way to seven foot 10. But the real cool thing is they also have that UFR tip I was talking about, which is that unidirectional fiber. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually fishing those, they're like a moderate fast is what we're calling them, but you actually do see and feel every little crank of that crankbait. Yes. They're, yep. they're pretty much. I I fish I by it. sight when I fish a crankbait and and cr crankbaits are like kind of my jam. Like that's like, like it's either a crankbait or a jerkbait. And that's kind of like where I live. And I, I'm legitimately just watching the rod tip 75% of the time. That's all I'm really doing. It's feel. And then I'm watching that rod tip. hundred percent. We it. missed, we missed Dave Eller's super chat. So Dave, what's up my man. Uh, <laughs> and da David Ellers asks Dave, our Dave, Dave Brown. <laughs> Any talk at Akuma of a BFS, the bait finesse system, rod reel combo in the future? Nothing specific in the works. Uh, generally, when we're putting a combo together, rod and reel combo, they're in, in general overall for Akuma, it's going to usually be in the, in the lower end product. So it wouldn't necessarily be a piece that would be like a finesse something or something that you would go specifically to a store looking for. Uh, usually in our higher end gear, if it's a, if it's a real serious angler, they know what they're looking for. They want either a 6.6 .6 or a 7.3 or an 8.1 gear ratio in the reel. And then rod wise, we have such a breadth of rods within each family that you can really dial that in and get yourself mm. keyed into what you're looking for. Awesome. But that's how you get around that. Right. So it's like, yes, you could offer the combo or <laughs> or get what you like, get what you really want, because that's the exactly. difference. So we have the, you know, on the Okuma side, we have the issue of do we make a family of rods and make them technique specific? You know, if I dial up and put up a rod that says this is an all purpose casting rod, perfect, because you got it all covered. But it, hey, this is your deep crank. This is your worm rod. This is your Carolina rig rod. For anglers that are are really dialed in and know what they're doing, they can see that and realize that that's just a guide, and they'll go, they'll feel the flex in the store, they'll know what they're looking for, they know how they're gonna fish it. Uh, a lot of new anglers will go and they'll think, okay, that's a Carolina rod, and that's all I'm gonna use it for. You know, we notice that quite a bit. So, you know, it's 
it's kind of could go could go good. You know, it might really dial in a, a new angler that someone that wants to really learn, but it can also hold it back. You know, an angler might look yeah. at that and go, "Ooh, that's a that's a six foot nine medium heavy Carolina rig rod." You know, I, I was looking for a, something that's maybe something else, but <laughs> it, it, it's a catch twenty two because you don't want to yep. lose you don't want to lose a customer to the name, right? And that's that's like that's the deal. And so uh, I really like I really like what like some brands are doing because they're kind of like guiding you to maybe buying six rods and reels. Like that's fine, that's fine. Or you know, you take a little time, do a little research, figure out what it is that's going to work for you. And by the way, for for anyone who's like okay, I only, I only, I can only afford two rods. Like this helps you because you're not getting so specific that you've got to be like, okay, I got to have a flipping rod. I got to have a cranking rod. I got to have my medium. I got to have my medium heavy. I got to have my, all of that in a casting and all of that. And like, no, 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 no. Get a really quality rod. That's going to do three things for you on the heavy side. Get a really quality rod. That's going to do like some finesse, you know, jerk baity type stuff. Have that be your spinning rig. Have that be your cranking rig. And now you've got really, really high quality setups that are enabling you to do a lot of things. So like what, he, what we're kind of talking about is the difference between like the new KVD series that's out that says like, no, you must have this for like crankbaits and you must have this for jerk baits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, 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 no. Get a quality rod that's gonna do what you need it to do. Do a little mix and match. Yeah, it's it. a little different. Of course, you're gonna see, you know, a finesse angler in Florida is definitely gonna be a different than a finesse angler maybe Michigan. in the Midwest versus Southern California. In fact, we have Todd Klein. He's one of our, one of our Bass Pros and FLW guy. He's out of here in Southern California. His go-to drop shot rod is actually one of our walleye rods of all things. So it's, wow. you know, we could we make drop shot rods within a couple of the different series, but his favorite one is one of our dead eye drop shot rods or a drop shot dead eye jigging rods that he uses for his drop shot. It's like a seven, four medium light or yeah. something crazy. That's rad. Uh, Chris Shu with another question for you, Dave. What is, and thank you for the super chat, sir, by the way, that's where that's coming from. Uh, so what is your fishing experience? Because I feel like it's something Paul was going to ask too. So this kind of helps us get back onto show notes, but you're, you're, give us the breadth. Like what is the fishing experience for you? What's that world for you? So my world started when I was about six years old fishing. You know, obviously we all fished when we were kids, maybe with our parents or mm -hmm. what have you. But uh, I started actually working on a, it's called the Annie B Barge out of Long Beach, California. Uh, I started going out there with my dad a lot. They asked for uh, pinheading, which is like a junior deckhand. So I'd go out there and deckhand. I'd be filleting fish for 10 cents a piece, uh, helping people tie hooks, uh, getting set up. Did that through... I don't know, probably my early teens or until they closed that thing down. Whoa. Other than that, Southern California fishing. I was born and raised out here. Luckily in Southern California, we've got everything from giant bluefin tuna to giant largemouth bass, rainbow trout. I was just up in Pyramid Lake in Nevada last week chasing giant cutthroat trout. What'd you get? We got uh, we got 70 over two days. It was, oh uh, my God. It was tough. It was so Jeff, that's the spot where you get up on a ladder and you walk out into this, into the, until like, you, you never told me the name. Yeah. Until yeah, you yeah. can't, I did. And so you can't walk anymore. And then you plop the ladder down, climb up. And then typically guys are casting from there. Casting that's... flies, casting spoons. We were actually on a boat. So we were, uh, we were doing a bunch oh. of different things. We were, I've got a TV show up there that we were working with, but we were actually fishing these things like bass. So we were having a good time just throwing, uh, just throwing jerk baits. Oh throwing gosh. them up shallow into six feet and these trout these you know we were catching 10 and 12 pounders but they were coming out of the weeds and they were just crushing these jerk baits so tell them, what's little... you, tell them what's you, i mean these are the biggest brook trout in the world it's like a it's like a it's like a strain of book brook trout that's been like untouched for like millions of years well these are cutthroat trout or cuts sorry yeah cuts yeah. so they've got they've got two strains of cutthroat trout within there it's a real high like uh acidity lake yeah. So there's nothing else in there. They have two each of, and they've got a couple of the little bait fish, but there's no bass, there's no trout, there's no anything else, yeah. and they're just these cutthroat trout, and they're they're nuts. So we were fishing the we were fishing the jerk baits, we were casting tree, we troll, we do whatever you want. The fun part that we had were on these little blade baits, our new fish lab uh, little guppy blade baits. They're a wide body blade bait, but it was cast in towards shore, lift it up, you can feel that thing wiggle, and then it swims yeah. back down. Usually the second raise is just hammered. <laughs> Ultralight rod, six pound test, and a twelve pound trout, dude. It was nuts. So the first full team like collaboration is gonna be there, right? <laughs> exactly. Pyramid Lake, uh June 9th. Look, but as we far don't as the rest of my much. experience, like I said, I've I've been to all fifty states. I've uh, I've fished everywhere. I fished everywhere for Okuma. 
I, when I'm traveling, we're talking about travel rods. I'm mm -hmm. when I'm going to any one of these distributor shows or a trade show around the country, I usually have my travel rods with me. If I know I'm going to be somewhere nice. that there's fly fishing, I'll bring my fly gear. I'll throw the waders in another bag. Spent a lot of time in Florida, so everything from uh, amberjack to tarpon to sailfish to marlin. I've uh, you know I've been lucky enough to work in an industry where I, I do get to fish a lot, and uh, I've caught a lot of fish. That's awesome. And in between catches, you're just hammering that Instagram, right? Like exactly. 10,000 posts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, by fishing, I mean, you know, pro product testing, really. Ex exactly. It's a write-off. See, Paul gets pissed when I'm like, bro, we got to make one post and we have to pause fishing. And we're just like, all right, let's hammer out this post. I guess it's, let's it's... do an intro. Let's do an outro. And then, <laughs> and Paul's always like, can we just can we just not turn the cameras on? Can we just fish? <laughs> like, wouldn't it be great? Hear me out. Hear me, Hear out, me dude. out, dude. <laughs> if we could just fish and not record it or do intros and outros, wouldn't that be dope? And I'm like, no, it's for the people, dude. <laughs> so, so you talked a little bit about like sort of like what the bread and butter is, right? Like it's that Pacific Northwest, that's the trolling and all that. We also talked about like the 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 breadth of the offering, right? And how how it gets into the walleye, how it gets in the ice fishing, how it gets in the bass fishing and all that. So what's sort of the strategy for like this year and maybe the next couple of years? And like, I mean, obviously you guys want to try and grow in some of those like targeted areas and with everything that's going on. I mean, obviously like the fish industry is like just jammed with buyers right now. There's like people out there, everybody needs, you know, and wants gear. So what's kind of the strategy for how you guys are going to sort of move into further into the bass market, further into the ice fishing market, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's, uh, let's touch on that. So, you know, as you were talking about, there's so much new entry into the sport and you were talking about Instagram a second ago. You know, one thing we did on the Okuma side is we get a lot of, a lot of questions from new anglers all the time. Um, everybody listening here has been into a tackle store of some sort, and it can be fairly intimidating. If you're a new angler, you don't want to go in there and ask how to tie a knot or, you know, what is a Carolina rig? How do I set one up? You know, you get, even if you go into some forums nowadays, you, you ask a question and then 20 of the answers are just going to be somebody with some kind of smart ass answer. Right. Always. So <laughs> we get, you know, we get a lot of these questions that come through social media. You know, how do I tie a Palomar knot? How do I do this? You know, how do I know if my rod's casting or spinning? As a lifelong angler, there are things that you figure that everybody knows, but we come to realize that that there's so much new anglers, moms taking their daughters fishing, you know, just parents taking the kids out, grandparents, could be absolutely anybody, and it's it's really incredible, but these questions keep coming through, and so we started doing this something called uh, Tune Up Tuesday with Okuma. So what happens there is every Tuesday we make a post and we, we put out some sort of technique or an answer to a question. You know, how do I know my rod spinning versus casting? Seems pretty mm -hmm. straightforward, but, you know, it's not something that everybody knows. So that's that's kind of, you know, what we're doing for that new angler side. But to get the product out in front of everybody, like this year specifically, we, uh, so Okuma's a couple different layers. One thing is we have outside sales reps in each territory. Each territory, like where I live down here in the West, covers 13 states. We have a rep group that covers that. And within that, they have their own set of pro staffers. Those pro staffers might go work shows. They may go talk to retailers. They can do a bunch of different stuff like that. Within Okuma, we don't necessarily have a, a full pro staff, but what we did this year is I've got a big captains and guides program, and, that, and that's a bunch of our captains and guides from around the country. could be each state has a couple. And then on top of that, we added our new influencer program, which is what we're doing here today. Uh, the influencer program has been pretty awesome. We went out and we contacted some of the, the top influencers in the industry. We chatted with these folks. We got them some product to test out. A lot of people knew who we were. Some people didn't. Um, you know, some people turned us down. They already had some contracts or some stuff that they were already doing. But within that, we're hoping that everybody can get the word out. Like I said, we're a smaller company. You know, you were talking about the SLX reel. You know, Shimano's got a giant marketing budget. You know, they're a, they're probably, what, six or seven times larger than us if you look at gross revenue. So they have a big marketing budget. They can put the word out a lot bigger than a smaller company like we can. If you look at our catalog, like I said, it's 250 pages. So it seems like we've got a lot of stuff. But, you know, if I want to focus on on the Midwest walleye market you know that takes away from a little bit of everybody else so with that new influencer program we went and we targeted different anglers from all around the country we got people from rhode island i know you had uh i know becca. you had becca on here a couple yep. weeks ago yeah, exactly so we've got lady anglers we got guys from everywhere we got people down in florida we got 
the Texas, the Midwest regions. We've got a gentleman in Hawaii, one of our top guys. You know, so oh, that guy was awesome, by the way. What was his name? We, that's uh, Chris, Chris Takahashi, Scuba Chris. Dude, he's so <laughs> rad. If there, if there was, I'm going to be honest with you, if there's one person on the influencer call that I wanted to fish with, that guy. <laughs> but he got, he probably, after our influencer call, he probably had eight phone calls. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's in Hawaii, like, let's go fishing. Like, <laughs> He didn't have yeah, stuff. everyone's like iced in. They're like, hmm, who should we go hang out with? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had a bunch of Wisconsin boys. You had Rhode Island. Like, we're all just up here freezing. Like, well, oh, it'd be great to fish down south. You had a bunch of Florida boys. I know the Salty Skills guys are on your team. Yeah. Like, uh, Tackle Junkie, which I never knew. That guy's super cool. So, he is yeah, awesome. lots, lots Debo, of awesome. Of course. Debo, yeah. Oh, Debo's on? Debo's good? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Wait, dude, De- he's Debo and the right, Psycho Stick. Debo's our best friend ever. Friend of the show. <laughs> friend of the show. Phenomenal human being. Okay? <laughs> phenomenal human being. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Also, found out through that call that Pro Fisherman Jones is across the border from us. Because, like, Paul has a spot on Lake St. Clair on the Canada side, which is nice. where Pro Fisherman Jones is. And I was like, I need to go get some musky because that guy is that 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 boy is pulling big musky out of that lake every gosh dang day. <laughs> hey, maybe first let's just get the border open and get some smallies. Can, shush, we, shush, just, shush, can shush. we just have that back, please? We'll, we'll meet him in the middle. You start working your way. I'll start that's, working mine. That's how you get arrested, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> in the in the international waters in the middle. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So uh, you know, I. Other than, like, is there anything else that you guys are trying to do, right? So, like, re- new, Paul's like, like, what do I say next? No, it's like, what, like, you guys, you, you talked about, like, how you're breaking down all the way down to the beginners, which I, which I really like. Like, it's important to Love understand it. that the, the flood of beginners that are in, that are, ha- I mean, you, we're talking about the gear, right? And, like, the, the, the not availability that, like, the availability that why, doesn't exist. Why is all the gear gone? Because everybody's yeah. starting to fish. Like but this it's year, like, it's been amazing for fishing. I see our, but the lakes are like completely swamped. Yeah, <laughs> which is well, nuts. It's it's good though, but I think it's important to see that there are companies that are out there trying to, that are really being strategic in how they want to reach out to people. And it's like, okay, I've got X amount of budget. I recognize that it's like large, but it's not, it's not large and in charge, right? And so, how are you? You know, it's cool to see somebody that's like. I'm okay and I'm interested in reaching out to people who are new. And I mean, it seems like such a silly thing because it almost seems like painfully obvious, but Jeff and I have talked about this. We talked about a hundred different ways about making fishing, like something that we get to do every single day. And, you know, we had a lot of ideas about like, Oh, well, you know, we'll do this, that, and the other thing. And, And it always came down to like there, you talked about it. There's a big intimidation factor. Fly fishing, I think is the absolute worst. (laughs) <laughs> and it's awful. I love fly fishing. I did it all myself. I learned by my own, on, all on my own. And I screwed yeah. everything up for like five or six years before I got anything right. And you're talking and about like forums and walking into shops though, right? You're, you're talking about like encountering the elitists. But like everyone's this. elitist. Like they don't even yeah. know it, well, but they're being fair. elitist by existing. And it's like, it's, yeah. they're not doing by it on exist. purpose. <laughs> But it's like you walk into yeah. a fly shop and they're like, oh, bro, like, so you want like a blah, 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 blah. And you're like, you know, you want a fast, you know, sink tip, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's and it that person is just like instantly turned off because you just assume that they know, you know, I know none of these words. <laughs> it's like going to a gym. It's not cool. A lot of times, it's if you so- haven't gone to a gym in five years, the last thing you want is some bro being like, get off my machine. Like, it's just it sucks. And it's, I think it's really cool to see something that's like, we, we are going to be really intentional, even though it's like business driven, but like, we're going to be really intentional about reaching out to people that are new in a way that they want to be reached out to. And I think that's really cool. I, I really do. I mean, I mean that, like, I think that's it's, really neat. It's good. It's relationships driven and relationships do yield business. But the important part is that you create those relationships, which I think is awesome. Like you're, it's the olive branch to the beginning angler. Right. And like, we, we never on our channel pose as like experts. We, we just, we purposely do not because guess what guys, 
we're not, but we have picked up and learned things. I think, I think the thing we highlight the most is that we've learned on this channel because there have obviously been times you guys know, you, you know, all of you guys watching where I've been wrong and that happens. Uh, and you know, I, I learned from like people watching the show. Like I learned from the comments. I learned from other creators that I talk to and like, I just want to, I have a beginner's mindset in just about anything. Like I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I will just start businesses and Paul can attest to this. And I like piss Paul off with this. I'll just like jump off the deep end immediately and just make things happen. If I can like build parachute on the way down, that's how I roll. Um, so like, I, like I'll just jump into this thing and I'm like, I love fishing. I want to, you know, make a channel where I talk about fishing and go fishing and try fishing gear like all the time and like learn. But because of that, I have to have a beginner's mindset because I'm stepping into industries uh, that I know nothing about and like learning about it as I go. So I don't have since I was six fishing experience necessarily, but I learned from awesome people like you, Dave, who know a, an insane amount, a breadth of knowledge that I can absorb like a sponge, whatever I can. And like, I hope you guys watching do that too. And, and like, I love that you do extend that olive branch to those people because like Paul said, it is extremely intimidating. Like I've walked into that fly shop and you know, the dude's wearing wearing his waders inside. And I'm like, why are you wearing waders inside? I know you're not going fishing anytime in the next four hours. And that's gotta be sweaty as hell. And then like has flies in his hat. And I'm like, bro, is this like a river runs through with Brad Pitt? Like, is that what we're doing right now? Because this is ridiculous. And then he says like, yo, what are you throwing today? I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't live here. This is the Osable. I don't live anywhere near the Osable river. I don't know. Like you live here. Tell me what to buy. I'll buy the things and do the stuff. But like, you're pissing me off. So I just leave. And luckily in Osable downtown, they have a bar right next door. So you just go get your beer <laughs> immediately after being like ridiculed by locals. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as a company that manufactures fly reels and rods, we need another river runs through it to happen. If that movie can come out, that would be awesome. Business just spiked after that. Everybody wanted to get on the water. Dude, I'll talk to Brad. He's a good friend, friend of the show, Brad Pitt. I know you're watching, Brad. I know Mr. You're Pitt. Watching. Mr. Pitt, sorry. A river runs through it again. <laughs> Actually, if you guys watch that show, Yellowstone, I think it's on Netflix, is it? Ooh, they use uh, Okuma gear all through that show. Oh, really? Shut up. So was that, that was not the TV show you were on recently, I think was it's, it? It's HBO on Prime. Were okay. you there consulting? Me? No. Shoot. I wish. Oh. <laughs> That's Dave nice. Make, Dave's in the background of many scenes. He's just always there. Like, hey, <laughs> dumb, dumb. <laughs> Ten and two. <laughs> Ten and two. This is not correct. <laughs> oh, less wrist. Yeah, it's not so. No, 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 no. I love oh, now it. I have to watch the show. I got to see the technique. I got to see what they're doing. There's a sidearm in it. Just like Paul breaking his rods. <laughs> it's called CG. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, um, what are what are some of the? Uh, tell us about some of the the things that are upcoming. Tell us some industry. Some, tell us some secrets that we're not supposed to know about. So uh, actually, Jeff got to see one of the real cool secrets on the Okuma side, which is a, a new bait cast reel that I, I really can't talk about yet. I don't think it's going to make iCast, but this thing is going to be a game changer for us. We'll probably get one into Jeff's hands here pretty quick. Did you get one yet, Jeff? No. Okay, I'm waiting for good. all the, all the random... sounds very upset. <laughs> no, Dave, no. <laughs> well, yeah, but so we did... I, I've been getting you're... random Akuma like, deliveries, so maybe. Yeah, maybe keep checking your boxes. Will do, man. That'd be amazing. <laughs> but this thing is this thing's nuts. It actually is going to be a game changer. It's a it's an awesome reel. This year's iCast with everything that happened at all of the factories overseas. You know, we don't have much. There's going to be, I think, eight new families of introductions total when we usually have you know twenty or thirty. Uh, Fish Labs actually got a lot of new stuff coming out, which is pretty exciting. Nice. It's it's got a nice breadth of stuff on the soft steel side. We've got some uh, bulk uh, fluorocarbon, which is going to be nice. People that want to completely spool up their reels with fluorocarbon, that's going to be uh, something that can happen. Nice. But, I you know, it, new stuff. Yeah, there's there's some really cool stuff happening. It's it's an exciting time. It's always exciting. Yeah. Wait, well, am I going to be able to show this reel when it comes in, or do I have to, like, blur it out? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So maybe I won't send you one right away? Or... <laughs> no, just you're... let me know when it's arriving, and I'll say, Jeff. Please slow down. You can't show this. Yeah, this is camera guy Paul. Don't listen to him. He <laughs> operates the camera 24-7. <laughs> we have been known. We sent those, those original Psycho Stick samples. We sent them out to a couple of guys. This is probably the beginning of last year. Oh, yeah. And uh, you know, we're like, don't say anything. Here's an 
NBA, don't don't say anything, you know, take a look at this, have some fun. Those things ended up on the internet so fast, and we got so many messages that we knew we had to go forward with this product. So sometimes sneaking that stuff out can work pretty well. Oh, wow. Well, so so this one, you, you guys accidentally sent this one, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll just I'll just cover it, man. I'll cover it. I'll blur it out. It's gonna be really hard, but I got. Jeff a doesn't know how to now. do that. It's gonna be no out idea. I'm gonna time. learn. I'm gonna learn. <laughs> this is a this learning is show. We already discussed this. We're talking no more thumb, no more thumb on the spool kind of thing. It's gonna be awesome. Dude, that's yes. oh yeah. See, <laughs> now you guys are gonna get mad again because I'll be like, oh SLX Mazda Serrano. Now I'm gonna be like, oh so SLX DC, mm, come at me, bro, and you're Goodbye. gonna be so mad. You're gonna be Good. so mad. <laughs> it's the bait. It's the Good. bait you gotta. It's the bait you gotta click on. I love that. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, that's most of what what we've got for the show. I want to roll. Can we do the giveaway? Can we, we start can do the giveaway? The giveaway. All right, you guys, you know the drill. You need to chat in order to enter said giveaway. Start chatting now. If you are not here, you're missing out. If you are here, tell people you know who are not here to come back and participate. It's a it's a chance to grow the show. It's a chance to have a lot of fun. And it's a chance for one of you peoples, you amazing peoples, to win 25 bucks. It's a gift card good to monsterbass.com. It is not good for the subscription. I need to put that out there. But they have a gigantic store and you can get your first subscription box for 10 bucks. So, yeah. They sell Burley merch there. I don't know if you guys know that. You can get a Burley <laughs> hat. You can get a Burley shirt. You can also get a lot of tackle. That's what a lot of you guys have been getting before. So, it's tackle season. Get your tackle stocked up. 25 bucks for that. That goes a long way. Chaz? So, I think we do. Hang on a I second. Think... Can we show those? Let's let's show those. Let's real do, quick. Well, let's do, Jeff. Should we do it in two rounds? Should we do the? We we'll uh, do two two giveaway winners now. Yeah. There we go. That right there is. I have this one. It's a beast. That thing. I have watched Pike chase this thing. It's amazing. It's gigantic. Uh, I didn't have my swim bait set up at the time, and none of my setups were great for it. So I was just like flexing on some rods. But yeah. So we're. What are we giving away today? We're giving away one of those. Let's give away two. Let's give away, uh, you can give them both the same winner. You got both. I'll do it. Uh, I've actually got a couple different colors here, but that's the six inch and then the four inch. That's the new Fish Lab Bio Shad Wake Bait. These you things are awesome on the top water. They just make an incredible wake that just drive bass nuts or a pike or musky or whatever you happen to be doing. But these things are sturdy. They've got some incredible yeah. hooks on them and uh, they're nuts. I'm going to go throw these things for tuna this year. Oh my gosh. The action on them is, is phenomenal. Cause I, I did get a chance to throw a few of them around. I had the smaller size and the bigger size too. And yeah, they're, the movement on them is awesome. The wake is awesome. And like I said, I had a pike chase it like immediately. And that was in late, late fall. So I was pretty pumped about that. So sports freak 76, <laughs> you keep calling out Paul's improved clinch knot. I, I sniped you. I saw you Dude, every single it. time. Paul is getting hit on this improved clinch knot. That is I like it. I will take all the So, they, all right, so everyone's chatting. So everyone, everyone kind of yeah. knows, but one, one the... giveaway winner will get a twenty-five dollar gift card. One giveaway winner will win from Dave here a it, two, two wake baits. You get one in the big size, one in the little size, right? Or whatever you want. I don't know. It's up to Dave. So, <laughs> and in order to win, you have to just chat. All we all all we need to yeah. do is chat, and that's your entry. And Charles will will roll a winner. But while they're chatting, well, you also need to be subscribed to the channel as well. Oh, oh, yeah, you, you have to be you, subscribed to the channel. Obviously, what are you doing so. here if you ain't subscribed? Let's go. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Easiest thing you ever did. Easiest 25 bucks or, or swim baits you ever made. Let's go. So uh, rapid fire? Let's do rapid fire, then we'll draw the winner. So these are going to be, these are gonna be Dave, these are going to be rapid fire Purple. questions. You already won one. All right. First one's done. So just so Purple you know, is per the correct answer, sir. Purple correct. is the correct answer if it's bait related at all, by the way. So, <laughs> the, uh, so I'm going to make these mostly... Rod slash real Okuma except, uh, uh, centric. All right. So my first question is going to be, what is your best all around? So like, if you could only have one best all around rod and then real combined together. Are we talking bass fishing? We're talking bass. We're talking okay. bass. <laughs> so yeah. what I would Not probably do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually, I actually dig the Serrano rods. I would probably go with a Serrano, like a seven four head seven three heavy like a frog style rod match it up with one of the komodo ss that two seven three and take that thing anywhere i, I just saw komodo. the komodo for the first time and i was yep. like 
You have the power like, handle one too. The the, the big boy. <laughs> the power handles are nuts. So that comes in that 200. There's a 350 and the 450. Those 350, 450. We actually take those out tuna fishing in the West Coast here and catch bluefin tuna to that 60 to 80 pounds. They're so much stopping power. It's nuts. I picked so I up should... a 350 for the swim bait setup. Perfect. I'm yeah, great swim bait still... setup. So I should yeah. be able to handle a five pound bass. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> With my 13. truck wish. That's great. <laughs> yeah, with my All right. truck wish. So oh. what, is the, what is the best, what would you, what is your favorite of the uh, the high-end rods? Of course, on bass, I guess, right? So that psycho yes. stick, as soon as those things hit the market, we've been having a chance to play with those things over the last year. But just the, the touch of those things, you can feel every little nick and bump. They're phenomenal. They're exciting. I want to say there's 11 in that whole series that'll get you going, but... Those should be hitting the water. Just a little backstory on that. Those were introduced at last year's ICAST. Those were coming over in a container on that ship that almost flipped over outside of Japan. Oh so uh, on that container ship, they lost 1,300 containers. And uh, luckily, ours was not lost off of that ship. But uh, that ship made a quick U-turn into the port of uh, Tokyo. And it sat there until they unloaded it and brought everything back. So... Like everybody else, we're just waiting for our product to show up. My buddies at Skosh, you guys familiar with Skosh Electronics? They uh, they lost one of their containers. It was right before Christmas, and this was all of the like Black Friday product that they were waiting for. There's, it's crazy. Luckily, we didn't lose anything, so we didn't lose all that production time and uh, getting us stuff rebuilt. But nobody cares about insurance in that scenario. Yeah, exactly. Like no one, no one is like, oh, whew, we got insurance. So like, my entire year is ruined. My yeah. entire year. So, oh my so gosh. Those psycho sticks should be hitting in the next couple of weeks for everybody though. We're, we're excited. Dude, I need to get one. That is I, so... I ordered two, I think. I nice. want them really bad. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Uh what do you think is the best looking combo? Total. Any total breadth of the assortment. Bass, non bass, whatever. So right now I'd probably go with that Serrano setup. Serrano rod, Serrano reel. It just stands out. Uh, you know, depending on if you're a tournament guy. It might not be what you want to go for because a lot of people right. don't want to see what you're fishing. They don't want to see how you're twitching, how you're working, how many, how are you doing one, two, three, one, two. Sure. You know, they, they don't want you to be able to see that, but uh, I dig them. I, I fish them on my kayak all the time. I think they stand out as a, as a dude that's out fishing all the time. I, I like them. And so they we didn't get a chance to ask you about your kayak because I'm literally just going to go there. We, we are, we are kayak fishermen ourselves. And, uh, you heard that we have Hobies. So Dude, what do you have, sir? I know Morgan and Kevin very well. I actually don't have a, a Hobie kayak. Uh, my current one is a riot kayaks. It's a, it's the Mako 12. It's also a pedal kayak, but it's got the nice. propeller system rather than the Mirage drive. Right. Uh, cool little kayak. You know, so I saw someone asking about a good beginner kayak. That's a, that's a good one. Then 1500 bucks for a pedal kayak. I actually used to work with Cobra kayaks way back when I was on their pro staff for many, many years. So in my yard right now, I've got a Cobra Marauder. I've got a Tarpon 160, which is the wilderness system boat. And then I've got yep. that, uh, that, the Riot Mako 12, but I've paddled all of them. I've been a kayak tournament fisherman from probably 1990 is when wow. we started that. This was back in the old ocean scramblers and all those, uh, early, early boats. Everything wow. from the uh, Cobra Fish and Dive to the uh, Malibu Extreme. I've had them all. I've owned them all, and uh, I still do it a lot. How do you? How like did I, you feel? Dang. How did you feel when you when they started coming out with boats that you could like legit stand up in, like platform style, sit on tops? Live so it's on. funny. So I've went from everything from that real narrow, like my Wilderness one uh, sixty out there, sixteen feet, but it's about twenty four inch beam on that thing, so super narrow but fast. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'll out paddle anybody out there. Um, but like the first real wide boats were that Cobra Fish and Dive. That thing had a 36 inch beam. And this was probably 96 ish when that thing came out. And we could stand up on that boat. So we're fishing our local, uh, our local harbors and we're, we're pitching docks just like you do in the freshwater, but via saltwater. Those things were very wide. You could sit side saddle on those things. But you know, now, that, now you got leaning posts and everything else, man. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. awesome. We're gonna do a whole nother episode. You just the I had no idea that you were into the kayaks, and I wish you, I had. You just got that. brought in. <laughs> you just you're in the club, dude. dude you're in it. the club. Everyone that's like, oh, we my, my saltwater boat. I got my bass water boat. I got my even someone's yeah. like, I got my John boat. I'm like, you're in another category of human being. You live over here. Anyone who does kayak fishing, you're in the brotherhood. So, dude, you're in the brotherhood. So, we, our, like out here in Southern California, we used to do we used to do our kayak events, and there would be 200, 250 anglers in those events. 
Oh, man. The whole series was called the Plastic Navy. It was a, <laughs> it was a, it was a blast, man. Those, unfortunately, those ended probably in like, I don't know, 2006 or something we'll like that. Yeah. But we need to bring it back. It was a, it was a blast. That's nuts. Yeah, we got to do, we'll do more kayak episodes. Just obviously it's been ice, uh, but we're going to get back to boat time. Also, speaking of awesome things, Dustin Dixon, who uses the most rad emoji I think I've ever seen, which I believe is a Nintendo Switch controller <laughs> with like, like awesome shades. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the $10 donation, my friend. That that deserves like a super glug glug. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. This is gonna be the last one. This is a comment, not a question. Before we roll, it's uh, a comment. This is we a don't comment, do comments on this show. No, this is a comment from it's me. A questions personally. only show. You know what we need to do? You know what would be the video that would sell? We need to go to. I'm gonna fly out west with Jeff and I are. We're gonna bring our kayaks. Somehow. Who has never we're been get to kayaks. California? <laughs> we're gonna go to like Washington, and we're gonna go in the harbor, and we're gonna try and catch sturgeon from the kayaks. Is that? Can we do that? Can that can be a thing? Got- We've got influencers on the staff that'll take you out and do it and put you right on uh, right on some sturgeon. Actually, one of the guys that was on our call, he's out in San Francisco Bay, and he's fishing in 12 to 20 feet deep for the big sturgeon. Jeff. And uh, he'll, wow. he'll put you on him any time. Yeah. All right. I mean, I know oh. that we have Lake St. Clair. We can do this, but it's a totally it's totally different when you're in – when you're when you're in 12 feet of water and and then uh, you got them all narrowed down into like a in like either a bay or like a harbor. I mean, it's a totally I've different game. I wanted to do the I wanted to do the Columbia River stuff because I've caught some big ones. I've caught fish that are close to 12 feet up there. Yes, but well, you like, know you're in a six foot you know a six mile an hour current yeah. on the kayak. Makes I it want that. Fun. Hey, I don't nuts. don't forget you guys can come down here to Oklahoma. We got alligator gar and Chaunce. paddlefish. John Chaz. is telling nice. us about some other dinosaurs. Chaz. We can no, they can they can hear me right first. now. They can hear me right now. Oh, they can hear Chaz. The yes, they can hear Chaz. Don't worry. All right, so here's what we need, Paul. We need two permission slips for our wives. Then we need a week and a half off, and then we need to actually road trip our way there. All these things and just are done. Hit, we'll hit a whole bunch of different <laughs> – all these things are done. Yeah. Shut up. Book it. <laughs> Paul and I went to Wisconsin for two days – Two days. He's been behind on everything in life for. Oh, yeah. My life's a months? shambles. My Does life's a shambles. Months? I got about this much wiggle room in my life. Can we roll these winners yet? How, how's a week and a half going to go for you, sir? Well, really well. All right. Let's I went to Stockholm for two. a week and I'm still caught up. Yeah. Well, okay, Chaz. Okay. All right, Chaz, give me two winners, please. Who's the first winner? The first winner will be. Yeah, and they will win the Monster Bass. PA. Yak, Yak Fishing PA. Yak Fishing PA has won the Monster Bass. I just wanted to like not let you guys fight over it. <laughs> so I picked one. I just <laughs> picked them, one for you. Tell them what they need to do. All right. Yak so PA, if you're here, say hi. And then also you're going to put your email in here and it's not going to show up. And I'm stealing Chaz's job right now because I've yep. heard him say it 20 <laughs> times now. Put your email in chat. It won't show up for everybody. It'll get blocked. And then Chaz will send me an email of that email. And then I will email you. <laughs> to confirm that you've won, and then I'll send you the gift card. <laughs> Yak Fishing PA, you here? Where you at? Ooh. We're just we're waiting on Yak Fishing oh, PA. Nope. He did it. He did it. We got him. Nice. I say he. He or she. What is your pronoun, person? Thank you for winning. You're awesome. Uh, <laughs> Josh, we need to roll another one. Yep. We have another winner this time for the two fish lab baits. Ooh, they are sexy. All right, are you guys great. ready? Yes, we're <laughs> ready. Of course we're Roll ready, Chaz. Ella. Chaz, we were born ready. <laughs> Ella Wait, has... What was it? Ella. I can't pronounce the last name. Ella? Mm-hmm. Ella, Ella No, you have to try it because I know the name. Go ahead. Is it Musumichi? That's what I was yes. going to say, yeah. Yeah, we. I got that one first try. She says yes. She's here. <laughs> Ella, <laughs> Ella, your email. It'll get blocked in chat. Nobody else will see it, It'll but Chaz invisible. will send it to me. Yay. Has Ella, no, Ella asked a bunch of questions, though. She has asked a bunch of questions recently. Mm-hmm. I was like, has she won or no? no? She asked a bunch of questions because I remember obliterating her name, just <laughs> destroying it, ruining it, no opportunity of redemption there. And then saying it right later on. Like yeah. Sunflower seeds. Yeah. The dill pickle Did ones for Paul. She was. She was. I didn't yeah. miss that comment. I appreciate it, Ella. Thank you very much. I'm a big <laughs> dill pickle seeds guy. You can't have it. 
all the time, every time, but it's a refreshing change of pace. <laughs> Paul, Paul does admit to getting burned out on the deal pickle. He's like, ah, let's not do that anymore. Let's go for <laughs> zesty. Man. All right. So Ella, just post your email in chat and I'll get it off to Jeff. Oh, yes. Ella, please do that quickly before we sign off. Email in chat. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Waiting for you. Anyways, we'll share it. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Nice try, Mojo. Yo, Next nice time. try. Somebody try tried to, to snipe that win. <laughs> wow, Mojo swoops in and he goes, well, I'm going to win this thing. All right, well, Ella, we'll give you some time to do that yep. or contact me after the show or IG message me, all right? And... Mojo, don't IG message me yet. But if you win next week, then you can. <laughs> Freaking sniper, dude. All right. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for your time. It has been swell. Obviously, we need to have you back for a kayak episode because it seems like you can teach us a lot about awesome kayak things that we don't know about. So thank you again. You definitely talk kayak and anytime you want. Heck yes. We're going we're gonna to plan that one soon. We're going to do that. So uh, Dave, again, where can they find Akuma? All your social medias. Yeah, exactly. OkumaFishingUSA.com is the website. FishLabTackle.com and SoftSteelUSA are the three websites. And then you can find uh, all of the social links from there. OkumaFishingUSA all the way across the board. FishLabTackle. And then uh, SoftSteel's got a couple. There's SoftSteelUSA and SoftSteelTackle. Um, but that's it. There's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all kinds of fun stuff happening. We do lots of giveaways and contests on those platforms as well. So make sure you subscribe and follow. Free that's stuff. Awesome. Everybody likes free stuff. And Dave is punching out all of this social media himself, you guys. So obviously, you got to follow. You got to check it out. That's so awesome. Uh, and, and tons of good content. And we'll be bringing some content your way as well as this stuff comes out. Unless Dave tells me I'm not allowed or I sign an NDA. But I might just show it anyways, because that's what other people did before me. And it was good. Dave said it was good. He said it right here on the podcast. Well. It's recorded. <laughs> so if he gets mad at me, there you go. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you to everyone watching. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for the super chats tonight. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, of course, be sure to subscribe for more episodes. You can subscribe to the podcast itself, anywhere you listen to podcasts. And obviously, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. Paul's pouring a new drink because he's ready to be done with the show. Is this like your, hey, we're done here, bro. Like, let me just pour this. This is my bro. I'm waiting, bro. <laughs> Follow us everywhere. Paul posts a lot of TikToks. Sometimes they're good. And uh, <laughs> you guys should definitely watch them. He posted one today. You should check it out. Oh, did Ella post it? Uh, Ella, hook us up with your <laughs> email so we can hook you up with your fish lab stuff, lady. Uh, Gil, uh, did we not? Oh, that was your original uh, cue of oh, the that day. That was the question of the day. Oh, Chaz filled it in. Chaz, yeah. you filled in the show notes. That's for awesome. me. My guilty pleasure. I love uh, Pitch Perfect and all three of the Pitch Perfect movies. Ooh, I love it. Okay, okay. For all y'all listening, if you don't know Pitch Perfect, that's the acapella series, right? It's got uh, what's her name? Who's who's the Anna Kendrick? Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, she's the main character. I, mm, those are pretty good. That that's Chart like the Deuce bit... Nation. <laughs> Chart Deuce Nation is in the Sorry, house. The backlasher. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, what's yours? Jeff, what's yours? Why you gotta put me on the spot first? You go first. All right, I'll I, go. I got I, I don't know what makes a guilty pleasure. Like, I, it doesn't have to be a Britney Spears movie. I don't know, but I'm gonna say my guilty pleasure movie would. I'm gonna go two directions. Uh, we could go either Mulan. I love that movie. I don't know why it doesn't get more play. The original. Ooh. I haven't watched the new one, but it's gonna happen. And then I will say The Burbs, starring Tom Hanks, Carrie Fisher. The list goes on forever. That movie is probably the most underrated movie ever put on on DVD or film or anything. It's that movie is like, if you haven't seen it, you probably haven't yeah. ever seen another movie. It's phenomenal. Wow. I, there you go. I don't know if that, that counts like cult classic. I don't know if that counts. It's as absolutely a, a cult classic. Question. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Okay. Guil but guilty so, pleasure. Like if it's like something that I shouldn't be watching, I don't know. It's Mulan. I love something that you I should be sing, embarrassed about. I can is, sing. Is make it? A man, okay. I will tell you right now. I can sing make a man out of you. Uh, like on point. See, any place, anytime. That's where I was going to go. I was literally going to go almost, almost 
any Disney movie. And like, I have kids, I have two little girls, they're five and seven. And I got to tell you, they love Frozen. So like Frozen, Frozen 2, Mulan, uh, but also like Moana. Mo- I remember seeing Moana. I saw it on a Disney cruise in like the Disney cruise theater because those things are ridiculous. And I do- Niagara Falls, like just, mm, pff, I will cry to a Disney movie. That is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> my next question of the day is going to have to be what movie will make you cry every time because I've only Any Disney one, movie ever. And I know exactly what. I'm going to say right now. It's Air Bud. Airbud, <laughs> the first one when he when when they when it so in Airbud there's a moment where he's like mad at the dog for whatever reason I don't know why he's mad at the dog he's upset with the dog and and he goes to like this island on a ferry and they have like fun or whatever and then he has like a basketball because the dog plays basketball because it's Airbud and he it. takes the basketball and he like hucks it like a quarter mile like over the mountain he just hucks it. Oh and then the dog God. chases the basketball because that's the game that they're playing because that's what dogs do. And then the dog like, finally gets the ball and he turns around and the kid is just waving and crying from the boat. He's yeah. on the boat because he's like ditching the dog. And he the, like the dog didn't know. And I, yeah, I will cry every time I see that scene. It's not even Ooh, a question. Because oh. you brought that up, I do have to throw out Homeward Bound. Mm-hmm. At the end when Shadow is in the deep pit and it's all muddy and he can't get out. Tell me in chat right now, you didn't cry to that. <laughs> Tell me, because I'll call you a liar. I'll call you. We're ruining Dave Brown's. Dave's entire entire night is like totally toast. Dave, we're sorry. Go eat dinner. We're going to let you go. It's only like 2 <laughs> o'clock here. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's like, I still got emails. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Daylight saving time. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a different universe over there in California. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for being on, Dave. Uh, we appreciate it. You're awesome. And thank you to everybody in chat. Ella, if we didn't catch you, we're going to, you know, message us on IG. So we'll, we'll get you hooked up. We'll figure out the prizes. So we'll get you guys taken care of. Thank you for watching tonight. We'll be back again. When do we come back? Every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Maybe you guys come hang out. Talk to us live in chat. It's fantastic. We got guests lined up all month. Who's our guest next week, Chaz? Chaz is not on top of it. <laughs> he goes, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, there is one. We'll announce it later. It's Extreme Outdoorsman. Oh, is it Extreme? Extreme yeah. Outdoorsman. Extreme Outdoorsman, who is also in Michigan with us, he will be on the show next week. So if you guys follow him on Instagram, go check him out, and we'll be talking to him next week. All right. You guys ready? Chaz? Takes out. Took a swing at a wrecking ball, and I trade for my downfall, and I found a way to reconcile. Cause in my heart, it's not worthwhile. It's a bloody battlefield where some go down, others heal. In the end, it's all the same. All you can do is play the game.
Keep trying. 